present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Hello and welcome to I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. You join us at the Pavilion Theatre amidst the southern coastal splendour of Bournemouth. The town's origins can be traced to one Louis Tregonwell, who built the first house here in 1810 as a retirement home. He planted the famous pine trees of the area for their scent, which was believed to cure various diseases. However, the habit of tree sniffing has lately fallen out of the <laughs> with the advent of the pine-fresh toilet duck. In Bournemouth's early years, shops were banned, and tradesmen had to call from Poole or Christchurch. It was only thanks to the townsfolk's exceptionally acute sense of hearing that anyone ever heard them at all. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't until 1941 that Bournemouth came to the world's attention when the course of World War II was changed for good after the Japanese made the mistake of bombing Poole Harbour. <laughs> the Dorset coast is also famous for its sedimentary deposits dating from the Eocene age, and the curious still come here in search of fossils and even obscure little-known dinosaurs. Let's meet the teams. <laughs> Please welcome on my left, Graham Carton and Barry Cryer. <laughs> and on my right, Tim Brooke Taylor and Sandy Toxvig. <laughs> and settling down on my left hand, please welcome our scorer, the delightful Samantha. <laughs> Okay, we might as well get on with it. We start with a round called Dumbing Up, which is intended to reverse the inexorable move towards down-market TV and radio programs. Okay, teams, I'd like your suggestions, please, for TV and radio shows that might be made more upmarket or intellectually challenging. And Graham, will you start, please? Um, who wants to be a Moliere? <laughs> Tim. The bill, the bill is now the invoice. <laughs> Sandy. Animal what? Hospital becomes Buper Pets. <laughs> Bruce's The Price is Immaterial. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Whom? <laughs> Goodness gracious moi. <laughs> Scooby Doo, Therefore I Am. Tinky Winky, Dipsy, La La, and Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> <laughs> the Archbishop of Dibley. <laughs> Channel 4, Racine from Newmarket. <laughs> <laughs> Through the keyhole at one's other home. <laughs> Ready, steady, ask Cook to start dinner now. Watchdog without Anne Robinson. <laughs> oh. They Th think it's Range Rover. <laughs> Repeats of the goodies. <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay, well, after that flood of invention, <laughs> the teams are going to sing for us now in a round called One Song to the Tune of Another. Now, I can see from their look of puzzlement that the teams are anxious to know exactly what in blue blazes this could be all about. <coughs> well, it's actually not nearly as complicated as it sounds, teams. You might like to think of your tune as a house, and the words as the interior decor, which of course can be changed. A sort of musical version of changing rooms, if you will. 
That's where two couples swap houses and redecorate them in the style of a Dutch brothel or Bombay public toilet. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking, teams. Thank goodness that's all sorted out, except he's forgotten to explain where Handy Andy comes into this. <laughs> well, we don't need a Handy Andy banging away on his own in the background trying to destroy a perfectly good piece of furniture. <laughs> Not when we have Colin Sell at the piano. <laughs> we'll start with you, Barry. Would you please sing the words of Lou Reed's Walk on the Wild Side to the tune of Putting on the Ritz? <laughs> Holly came from Miami, FLA, hitchhiked away across the USA. <laughs> Plucked her eyebrows on the way, shaved her legs, and then he waltzed as she, she said, Hey, babe, take a walk on the wild side. <laughs> said, Hey, honey, take a walk on the wild side. And the colored girls go do, 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 It's you now, Graham. Would you please sing the words of Bob Marley's I Shot the Sheriff to the tune of The Skater's Waltz? <laughs> I shot the sheriff, but I did not shoot the deputy. All round in my hometown, they're trying to track me down. They say they want to bring me in guilty for the killing of a deputy for the life of a deputy but i say i shot the sheriff but i swear it was in self-defense i shot the sheriff and they say it's a capital offense sheriff john brown always hated me for what i don't know every time that i plant a seed Sandy now, would you please sing the words of Madonna's Hanky Panky to the tune of Lily Marley? <laughs> Some girls they like candy and others like to grind. I'll settle for the, the back of your hands or am I behind? Treat me like I'm a bad girl. Even when I'm being good to you, I don't want you to thank me. Look to spank me. Just spank me. Some guys like to sweet talk. Others they like to tease. I my hands, I my back, and do I mean excellent? Don't sober me with kisses I can get that from my sister Finally, Tim, would you please sing the words of the goodies Funky Gibbon song to the tune of Hey Jude? goodies how do you do we've just been down to the zoo we saw a monkey in a cage doing a dance that could be the rage it's not hard so let's all do the funky gibber do, do, do the funky given We are here to show you how Do, ooh, 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 ooh. ooh Funky given
Yes, thank you there to Colin Sower, without whose talent on the piano we seem to have managed for the last 12 years. <laughs> right, we have a game with a difference now. This is where the team say things that are totally unfunny. And the thing that's different about it is that they're doing it deliberately. <laughs> it's called straight face and shouldn't be confused with the similar game called straight fake, which involves sticking pins into a group photo of the shadow cabinet, the winner being the player that picks out Michael Portillo. <laughs> okay, teams, I'd like you to exchange random words on a subject of my choosing. Anyone eliciting even the slightest titter from our audience will be disqualified. This week's subject is things that women keep in their handbags. Okay, teams, I'd like you to utter your humour-free words in turn, please, starting with you, Tim. Tissues. Razor. <laughs> Batteries. Lipstick. <laughs> A fisherman's friend. <laughs> That's two words. It's one object. You know your own business best. <laughs> Show business is mine. <laughs> your secret is safe with me. <laughs> <laughs> Purse. Moist. Titter. I heard a titter there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please. Didn't you? Oh, yeah. No, over there. Mm. Over there. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, oh. Barry. Goodbye. It's supposed to be Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's turned into Anne Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, uh, who wants to go next? Moist towelettes. <laughs> you just did that to excite me, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> it's worked. Yes. <laughs> Graham. Saxophone. Scissors. Crampons. <laughs> what? Should it be a mountaineer? My phone number. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a Talk minute. I heard a titter from my right here. <laughs> that was Tim. <laughs> it was Tim tittering. It was Tim, Tim. Yeah. Oh, I've got lost now. <laughs> Whoever's word that was. It was out. Tim's word. He's, he's out. You're out, Tim. Sorry. <laughs> We're going for a walk later, <laughs> Harm. Are we carrying on? You carry on, Sandy, if you like. Okay. <laughs> Shetland pony. <laughs> little one, a little one. Stable. Oh. Everything. I, I heard a titter from Tim, so you're <laughs> you're both out. I won. <laughs> right, our next game is called Unoriginal Innovations and is inspired by the Innovations Catalogue. We all get we all get mountains of this junk mail delivered daily, offering page upon page of products of interest only to the weak willed and gullible. Personally, I remain totally unaffected by them. Thanks, at last, that is, to my handy solar-powered all-in-one catalogue shredder and composter. <laughs> but these catalogues got me to wondering how older inventions might have been sold by the magic of the mail-order catalogue, and I'd like the teams to share some of their favourites with us. Sandy, will you start, please? How many times have you accidentally put out a burning cigarette on one of your children? <laughs> Who hasn't stubbed out a cigar on a passing domestic pet? End burnt infant and singed moggy misery with the ashtray. Like all great ideas, the genius lies in the simplicity of this device. It's a tray which catches ash. Order now before emphysema stops you being able to. <laughs> Graham. No more tangled flex worries. <laughs> Is your hairdryer flex in a tangle? Is it getting frayed and dangerous? Time to get a cable-free, hand-operated towel. <laughs> Tim. 
Worried your baby is sleeping or not? No longer, thanks to Alexander Graham Bell's amazing new telephone. <laughs> if you're on holiday in America, for example, you can keep in touch with your baby at all times. <laughs> One cry and you immediately board the Queen Mary and bingo, five days later is your crib side. <laughs> your personal number is two. <laughs> Want to know more? Ring one. Very. The toilet roll. New from Thomas Crapper and Son. <laughs> Crapper's delight. Accessorise your water closet. No more dock leaves. No more asking the man next door if he's got two fives for a ten. <laughs> <laughs> That's all behind you, as is. <laughs> As is New Crapper's Delight. We put our business in your hands and vice versa. <laughs> Ivor Trump of Staines writes, Before discovering your product, I was so desperate, I nearly shot myself. <laughs> That's from The Guardian. Experts agree it's the number one product, the Royce of Rolls. Try Crapper's Delight. <laughs> right, teams, I'd like now to introduce a wonderful old Victorian parlour game called Squeak, Piggy, Squeak. Oh, great. That we loved to watch the servants playing when I was a lad. So, let's now return to that innocent age when young boys in cloth caps bowled wooden hoops along with a stick... Finely dressed gentlemen presented crinoline ladies with flowers in the street, and smiling chocolate box soldiers had their limbs blown off in the Crimea. <laughs> As I recall, Jenkins the butler would blindfold himself, get into a plastic bag, stick an orange... Oh, sorry. No. I'll read that one again. Jenkins the butler would blindfold himself and when he'd located one of the domestics by touch alone, would endeavour to sit on their lap with the aid of a cushion. Once sat there, he would pinch the poor woman before shouting, squeak, piggy, squeak. <laughs> he would then attempt to identify the squealer simply by the sound of their squeal. And what fun it was. <laughs> right, teams, I shall essay the role of Jenkins for this one and you will be the servants. <laughs> I shall, it was ever thus. I shall now blindfold myself before feeling my way into each of your respective laps. When I give the command, squeak, piggy, squeak, I'd like the person on whose lap I'm sitting to squeal like a pig. Right, teams, my blindfold is now securely on. Are you ready? <laughs> then he, here I come. For the benefit of listeners at home, I've just located my first lap and I'm mounting it, I'm mounting it now, so... <laughs> Whoever you are, squeak, piggy, squeak! I <laughs> know <laughs> this one. That's you, Tim, isn't it? N no, I'm, I'm over here. Barry. No, I'm behind you. Graham? <laughs> no, not me, not me. Surely it's not Sandy. No, uh, sorry, I'd gone to the shops for a minute. <clears throat> well, who is it then? Uh, Humph, I think you're sitting on the pig. <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, that was a lot harder than I thought. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's move on now to a brand new game called... Called... Get that pig out of here. <laughs> it's a brand new game called Pick and Mix Wills, which is all about removal firms and house moves. Did you get that? Did you understand that? I'm trying to ignore a titter from the end of the row here. I was thinking how glad I was I went to university. <laughs> <laughs> you 
in case you didn't catch that, this is a brand new game called Pick and Mixfords, which is all about removal firms and house moves. Now, Tim and Barry might be at something of an advantage in this one, as they ran a small removals firm during a short lull in work between 1968 and last Thursday. <laughs> In this round, one team assumes the role of removals men, delivering furniture and other belongings which they should describe. The other team will be nosy neighbours who will try to identify who the new homeowner might be. OK, Barry and Graham, you can be the removals men. The identity of your new homeowner will now be flashed to the theatre audience via the laser display board. <laughs> While for listeners at home, here's the mystery voice. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Okay, start moving your things in, please, Barry and Graham. Darling? Yes? Darling, get off, get off, get off! Something's happening next door. <laughs> oh, all right, I'm off. What's that noise? I don't it's know. It's whistling. Well, it's never whistled before. <laughs> from next door. Let's eavesdrop. Okay. Oh, yep. uh, up your end. Oh, oh. <laughs> I don't think we should watch any more. <laughs> yeah. oh. ah, that stopped the whistling. Oh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh dear. Oh. Isn't, isn't, it, a, isn't it a heavy bugger, Tristram? It's oh. only a bed. It's only a bed, for goodness sake. Only come a bed. on. Yeah, come on. Oh. There we are. Anyway, the other seven, they're not so big. No, no, they're all right. Smaller they're, ones. They're Get them in there. How oh, nice little beds they are, they? Nice. They're magnificent. Magnificent little These beds. Seven. Those seven of them, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell you what, leave the beds, leave your beds out of it. Can, uh, can I get you a cup of tea? What? Oh. Oh, oh, very that's kind very of you. Kind. We're parched. Yeah, Look. 18 lumps in mine, thanks. And uh, <laughs> a nice cup of tea go with this, um, this half-eaten apple we found, won't it? That's yeah. right. <laughs> God, another load of stuff here, a load of picture frames. What's this uh, all about? Oh, what's that for? Oh, oh, oh she's got uh, photos from her chemist. Apparently, they're nearly ready. Oh, right. Yeah, she's going to get them. <laughs> yeah. She'll be getting her photos from the chemist when they're ready. She, she said to me yesterday, yeah. yeah, yeah she, she said, said that, someday she... my stuff will come back from the chemist. She said that, didn't she? I oh, know, yeah, I heard her. Hmm. What have we got now, then? With tools and implements, garden tools and implements. implements. They're a bit small. Garden aren't they? stuff, isn't it? All well, this? some of it is pickaxes and all sorts. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Very small, very small. Yeah, but not this. What? Blimey. Look at the length of this. Good grief. Cool. What, is, what is that? I don't know. It's a hoe, isn't is it? Is it? Oh, yeah. Oh, never seen. Oh. <laughs> oh, what a high hoe. Oh, no, I've never seen. <laughs> A woman with seven small friends? No, that's Michael Jackson. Oh, so it is. <laughs> seven dwarves? Oh! oh. <laughs> well, I notice it's very nearly the end of the week of the show. <laughs> Just <laughs> not before we squeeze in a round of Swanee Kazoo where the teams combine the gentle ululation of the swanee whistle and the guttural rasp of the kazoo. Piano accompaniment will be provided by none other than Colin Sell. Actually, Colin was telling us he's just completed a three-week run on Broadway. <laughs> His was the slowest time ever recorded <laughs> for the tooting marathon. <laughs> Tim and Sandy, you're going to start. Your song is The Hokey Cokey, and it's to feature Sandy Toxvig on the kazoo and Tim Brooke Taylor on the swanee whistle. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Humph, excuse me, did you know, incidentally, that the World Hokey Cokey champion died last week? <laughs> it no, took him five hours to get him into the coffin. <laughs> Your turn now, Barry and Graham. Your song is uh, the Gilbert and Sullivan number, A Policeman's Lot is Not a Happy One, and it's to feature Barry Cryer on the kazoo and Graham Garden on the Swanee Whistle. gentlemen, as the David Shaler of time prepares to confront the eternal scales of justice, having long since defeated the bathroom scales of destiny, <laughs> I notice it's the end of the show. So from the team, Samantha, myself and the good folk of Bournemouth, it's goodbye. Timber of Taylor, Barry Cryer, Graham Garden and Sandy Toxvig were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton, Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultant was Ian Pattinson, and the producer was John Naismith. We present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Hello, and welcome to I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. You find us for a second week in the delightful Dorset town of Bournemouth. Bournemouth was developed into the resort we know today in the 1890s when fine drives and avenues were laid out to be opened by Queen Victoria and visiting guest Kaiser Wilhelm in full military garb. At the ceremony everyone gasped in amazement except Kaiser Wilhelm who gasped because he'd inadvertently sat on his helmet. <laughs> Nearby is Brown Sea Island, where in 1907 Lord Baden-Powell founded the Boy Scout movement. Ever since, young lads have gained their merit badges in camping and field craft by reference to his scouting for boys. <laughs> and in fast starting by reference to his arson for beginners. Dorset's most remarkable attraction is the Cern Abbas Giant, a graphic representation of a naked man cut into the chalk hillside. Many people have joined the Distinguished Cern Abbas Society, and I'm delighted to see several prominent members here tonight. <laughs> Bournemouth today has a reputation as magnet for those in their twilight years. The elderly and frail who've lost contact with the modern world come here to spend their days in peaceful idleness. <laughs> Let's meet the teams. <laughs> Please welcome, on my left, Graham Garden and Barry Cryer. And on my right, Timbrook Taylor and Sandy Toxvig. And preparing to enjoy the action on the desk next to me, please welcome our scorer, the delightful Samantha. A 
Our first round is called Situations Vacant. In the olden days, teams, large organizations seldom bothered to advertise to fill jobs. For example, the Navy used to send gangs of heavies into pubs, knocking hopeless drunks over the head and forcing them to sail their ships. We might find that laughable, but it's a system that still serves British Airways whenever they're looking for pilots. <laughs> So your suggestions, please, teams, of job adverts for positions that have suddenly become available. Graham, will you start, please? Wolf required to help with pig harvest. <laughs> sound, sound pair of lungs essential. Small good wolves need not apply. <laughs> There's a, a vacancy for a Margaret Thatcher. Any gender, though man preferred. <laughs> uh, bulletproof handbag provided, long hours and knives. Uh, must have knowledge of King Lear, particularly the blasted heath. <laughs> Thank you. Following the uh, untimely death of Joan of Arc, uh, martyr required, uh, must have own horse, non-smoker preferred. <laughs> Marie Antoinette, vacancy Queen of France, preference for cake and ability to keep head preferred. Apply to Louis the Sixteenth at Versailles forward slash guillotine dot com. You know. I see here Millennium Dome needs new chief executive. Would suit failed Welkstall manager. <laughs> Following the death of the old woman who lived in a shoe, oh. uh, wanted person who doesn't know what to do. Um, <laughs> excellent maternity benefits. <laughs> and a replacement for King Henry I. Oh, really? Yes. Oh. It says king stroke queen required for position of chief lamprey taster. Warning, lampreys may contain traces of nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Following the resignation of John Burt as Director General of the BBC, any old <laughs> wanted. <laughs> Does anybody else smell the end of my career? Does anybody else smell it? The teams are going to sing along now with some classic discs in the round called Pick Up Song. Samantha spent many hours in conversation with the BBC Gramophone Library research staff for this round. Deliberating over the fine old seven inches they presented for inspection. She, she says before deciding which she was going to spin, she had to think about each one long and hard. Each, each team member should join in with his or her song until, at my signal, Samantha turns the volume down. They should continue singing, and if on the music's return they're within a nano crotchet of the original, I'll be awarding points. And at this point, I usually say points mean prizes, and then I ask what do points mean? Prizes! But this week I'm not going to, because it's... because it's silly. This week's prize is just a thing to help the older single man liven up his alfresco evenings on the patio. It's this attractive pair of French widows. <laughs> right. We'll start with you, Barry. Would you please accompany Peggy Lee singing Fever? Never know how much I love you. Never know how much I care. When you put your arms around me I get a fever that's so hard to bear You give me fever When you kiss me fever When you hold me tight Fever In the morning fever all through the night Sun lights up the daytime Moon lights up the night I light up when you call my name and you know I'm going to treat you right You give you me give fever, me fever. Oh. That was so close I couldn't tell which was which <laughs> Your turn now Sandy, would you please accompany Louis Armstrong singing Hello Dolly <laughs> This is Lewis 
Dolly. It's so nice to have you back where you belong. It's canny. You're looking swell. Dolly, I can tell. Dolly, you're still glowing. You're still growing. You're still going strong. <laughs> I feel the room swaying while the band's playing one of our old favorite songs from way back when. So going. take her rap, fellas. Find her an empty lap, fellas. Dolly will never go. Okay, it's you now, Graham. Would you please accompany Ray Charles singing Hit the Road, Jack? Hit the road, Jack. And those come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more. What you say? Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more. Old woman, old woman, oh, you treat me so mean. You're the meanest old woman I ever have seen. I guess if you say so, I'll have to pack my things and go. That's right, hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back. And finally, Tim, while I close my eyes at the prospect, I'd like you to assume the persona of Britney Spears singing, <laughs> singing her lovely song, Baby One More Time. Baby, baby. <laughs> oh, baby, baby. Just to suppose to now. That something wasn't right there Oh baby, baby I shouldn't have let you go <laughs> I know you're right out of sight Yeah, show me How you want it to be uh, Tell me, baby Cause I need to know now Because my loneliness She's a virgin, Is killing you know. me <laughs> I must confess, I still believe, not any longer. <laughs> when I'm not with you, I lose my mind. Give me a sign. OK, the teams are going to do a bit of mime now in a round called Sound Charades. This is based on Give Us a Clue, the entertainment show that really is something else. <laughs> Give Us a Clue is the show where players were given a song or film title to mime in under two minutes. Who will ever forget the Grandmaster himself, Lionel Blair, winning in a world record time of 3.5 seconds when he brilliantly mimed Anchors Away by signalling first word sounds like... And <laughs> and pointing to himself and Timmy Mallet. <laughs> In the original the In the original the players weren't allowed to speak, much to the amusement of the audience. Our version differs in one important respect. <laughs> and the other change is that our terms can speak. OK, Tim and Sandy, you're to start, please, and your title will be displayed to our theatre audience via the laser display board. While for people at home, here's the mystery voice. Some like it hot. Some like it hot. OK, you're guessing this one, Barry and Graham. Off you go, Tim and Sandy. It's four words. Um, it was, it's a film, but there was a musical, but film I thought I would concentrate on, and it goes something like this. Would you care for some poppadums? <laughs> um... <laughs> No, I'd just like some chicken vindaloo, if that's uh, OK. With extra chilies. Perfect. Yeah. 
cat. Mm. No, no. no. Uh, <laughs> Is it a passage to India? <laughs> <laughs> yes, with a long way round. Yeah. Via Wales, that was. I think it's some like it hot. Yeah. yeah. Right, it's your turn, Barry and Graham. Your title's now being exhibited on the laser display board, and here again is the mystery voice for listeners at home. Billy Elliot. Billy Elliot. It's a film. It's a film. And okay. it's two words. <clears throat> and it goes like this. Oh, Hamish. Ah, yeah, yeah. You have know, oh, had your tea. Yes, I've had my tea. Uh, I had another of my cream horns. Oh, did you? Uh, yes. It doesn't show. Oh, look, it's... <laughs> <laughs> um, it's very lively here. It certainly is. Who are, who are all these people? It's all hubbub and it is. bustle, isn't it? It and is. I think they may. They may have come to see my new goat. Your new goat? Oh, hey, and I see he's a male goat. Ah. <laughs> what do you call him? Well, he's named after my favourite poet. Oh, what? Betjeman? Betjeman, mate. That's, that's stuff you put on your roof, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> No, this is my he goat, Elliot. Oh, hello. Goodbye. Oh, I think, Sandy, you've got it. I think it's Billy Elliot. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, we have an interesting game. Oh. That's, that's a, I've never said that before on the program. <laughs> and meant it. <laughs> we have an interesting game of oral dexterity now called Word for Word. Each team takes turns to exchange a random series of words between the two of them. If the opposing team spots a connection between any of the words, they may buzz to challenge. So, for example, imagine gibberish followed by rubbish and you'll have a pretty good idea of what's involved. <laughs> if a challenge is upheld, play pulses to the opposing side and so on until I wake up. Tim and Sandy, you can start. Fingers on buzzers, Barry and Graham. And as the man used to say when I listened to the wireless as a kid, off you jolly well go. Doggerel. Bonquette. Monocle. Hamburger. Pigeon. Fizzy. Forceps. Challenge from Barry. Fizzy pigeon. Mm. Yeah. Sixties mm. band. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Flat yeah, no. Barry. Yeah. So sorry. That's okay. Okay, Barry, go on. It was before my time. <laughs> <laughs> Croissant. Spoon. Diner rod. Talent from Sandy. Sorry, if you can't afford diner rod, you can clear a drain with a spoon. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so... True. Okay, Graham. What? Well, carry on. Carry, your team's carrying on now. You, you say one word and, and <clears throat> Barry will say another one. And just, <laughs> carry on. Glad you've honed in on it, huh? Hesitation. <laughs> what? <laughs> How many more times do I have to say the word? What? Oh, I see. Ah. Steam. Challenge from Sandy. Sorry, it's a popular train magazine. What steam? <laughs> ah. Far fetched. <laughs> Sorry, are you playing now? <laughs> Carry on, Graham. I'm not allowing that. Which? Halitosis. Challenge there from Sandy. Sorry, it's a, a popular bad breath uh, magazine. Which? <laughs> it's not that popular. <laughs> Has a shelf to itself. <laughs> and you Come read on, it Tim, at arm's you... length. What? Right, where are we? I was just saying, Timmy's got a time, uh, a chance. Bournemouth, now. isn't it? What? Bournemouth. We're in Bournemouth. <laughs> Sandy's come to see you. <laughs> She's brought some grapes. 
Is that man in the end bed dead? <laughs> right, it's now time to play the game called Mornington Crescent. Ah. First of all, I noticed from the mound in the listener correspondence waste bin that we've received just less than two letters this week. <laughs> and it comes from a Mrs. Trellis of North Wales. <laughs> she writes, Dear Mr. Rees, <laughs> I understand you're looking for suggestions for your quote-unquote programme. Can you tell me where the expression dull as ditch water comes from? <laughs> Yours sincerely, Mrs. Trellis. And so on with the game, which this week will be played to central standard rules. The area of gameplay is therefore restricted to original LCC boroughs as defined by the Local Metropolitan Government Act of 1927. Anyone who is not sure what these are is recommended to refer to the Little Book of Mornington Crescent, now available in over several bookshops <laughs> at a bargain £6.99. OK, we'll start with you, Sandy. Uh, Baker Street. No, you can't. I'm sorry. Well, it's not on. your it's central anyway, standard, though. straight uh, in. Yeah, I know. Look, no, I'm sorry, if we're going to start with this, it says under central standards that if a woman is playing in a team entirely consisting of men, if they're not wearing bow ties, they forfeit their first goes. Now, I didn't say anything. <laughs> I didn't say anything, but you have to allow me Baker Street. Is this a footnote? <laughs> no, actually, if you consult the book, she can play well, I'm Baker looking through Street. the thing here. Well, my apologies. Uh, yeah. Where? Where? Well, what it's, page? It's in here. 22. 22? Yeah. Well, hang on, I'm looking through the index here. You won't find it there. Great, oh, I'm in it. Great players of the... <laughs> yeah, I'm under... going to allow Baker Street. Can yeah. I apologise? I was yeah. wrong. But... I'll say okay. Baker Street, but I may not okay, go then any I, No, no, that's fine. I'll say Pimlico. You're not next, are you? Mm. Um, hang on, let's have a look. <laughs> Are you sure? Page 98. It's a wonderfully comprehensive book, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Two pages stuck together here. <laughs> What's, uh... Graham? You've got Tim's. What's you... the date? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> is that the date? Oh, it is, yeah. Yeah, no, it is my turn. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Pimlico, it was. Oh, dear. Bad start. Camden Town? Latimer Road. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Uh, Osterley. Queensway. Short Farm. Mornington Crescent. Yes. Ah. Yes. Yes. Sorry. I'm sorry, no, it's my fault. Here you are. If you pretend it's not happening, it goes away. <laughs> Our next game takes an educational slant with a look at the French language. It's quite surprising how many common English phrases are actually of French origin. For example, there's a popular magazine showing photographs of celebrities at the dockside called OK Magazine. <laughs> Our word cavalier comes from chevalier, the French word for a cheap voxel. <laughs> and from the, from the French term for ham soup, we get our common expression for a frightful actress. That's soup au lard. Right, teams, I brought along a selection of my favourite French sayings and proverbs together with some incomplete translations. I'd like you to complete them for me, if you can. Barry, il ne faut jamais courir de lièvre à la fois. Ah. One should not chase after two hairs at... A Bobby Charlton look-alike contest. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Graham, it's you now. Souris qui n'a qu'un trou est bientôt prise. A mouse that has only one hole <laughs> is is unlikely to raise a family. I would say. <laughs> well, the real answer is soon caught. Really? Sandy, il vieux me s'adresse à Dieu car c'est saint. It's better to deal with God than her assistant. <laughs> And the real answer is with her saints. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no know, fool. Do you know something? 
Tim, qui n'est poule aime a cacté. One who is born a chicken likes to get laid a lot. <laughs> I found the answer to what I was saying. Cackle. Cacate. Yes, figures, don't it? Cackle. You're... Oh, I'm, I'm enjoying this. I've never... <laughs> Since 1972, I really haven't enjoyed a round, but this one is... <laughs> Barry, now, you again. Quand le diable devient mieux, il se fait ermite. When the devil gets old, he turns into... The A21 to Eastbourne. <laughs> the answer is a hermit. And finally... Ah. Graham, à l'œuvre, on reconnaît l'artisan. I think that's probably wrong. Is it shouldn't be l'artisan. Eh? Ooh. Sam Ferrian. You can recognize a workman by his cleavage. Right, as this was Olympic year, we couldn't let 2,000 pass without paying a musical tribute to those fine athletes with our own round, singing relay. However, as in the real Olympics, shame has been brought upon us with several upsets. Barry and Graham both tested positive for Philosan. <laughs> while Tim was thrown out of the synchronized swimming team after he was asked to provide a sample. <laughs> and did it from the top diving board. <laughs> Singing Relay is a team game with each panelist taking one word each at a time. Musical backing at the piano will be provided by Colin Sell. As a matter of fact, Colin was telling us he's writing a symphony and he's been locked away completing his first movement. <laughs> Most people just read the newspaper. You know? <laughs> okay, we've got Western songs this week. Tim and Sandy, your Singing Relay song is Rawhide. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Though the streams are swollen, keep them <laughs> rolling, rolling through rain and wind and weather. Hell bent for leather, wishing my gal was by my side. All the things I'm missing, good fiddles, love and kissing. Are waiting at the end of my ride. Move um, on, head um, up, head um, um, move um, on, move um, on, head um, up, roar. Um, cut um, out, right um, in, right um, in, cut um, out, cut um, out, right um, in, roar. Well, it's your turn, Barry and Graham. I'd like you to provide a version of the Deadwood stage. <laughs> oh, the Deadwood stage is a rolling on over the plains. With the curtains slapping and the driver uh, slapping the reins. <laughs> Beautiful sky, wonderful day. Crack away, whip, crack away, whip, crack away. We're heading straight for town, loaded down with a fancy cargo. Care of Wells and Fargo, Illinois. Boy, all oh, the dead wood stage is up, coming all over the press. Like a homing pigeon that's a hankering after its nest. Twenty-three miles to cover today. So whip crack away, whip crack away, whip crack away. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as the cricket ball of time is whacked firmly by the bat of fate, and the wincing cricket of destiny pleads with the bat to stop. I notice it's the end of the show. So, from Samantha, the teams, myself, and the good folk here in sunny Bournemouth, it's goodbye. <laughs>
Pembroke Taylor, Barry Cryer, Graham Garden and Sandy Toxvig were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton, Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultant was Ian Pattinson and the producer was John Naismith. Present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Hello and welcome to I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. You join us this week at the Belgrade Theatre in Coventry. Actually, we were supposed to be at the Coventry Theatre Belgrade. <laughs> but RAF Bomber Command got there first. <laughs> Coventry enjoys several royal connections. Mary Queen of Scots was held here and was given a small dog which she took with her to the Tower of London. The animal was there at her grisly end, even as the axe fell. Then a witness shouted, Fetch! <laughs> Another, another famous event here was a duel between Coventry's sheriff, the Earl of Hereford, who challenged the Duke of Norfolk. When the latter arrived at the city gate in search of a bride, he was called by Hereford, who asked, Identify yourself and state your intentions towards my daughter. The gauntlet was cast down after the reply, Norfolk and good. <laughs> Amongst its, many other, uh, amongst its uh, many other attractions, the modern city is rightly proud of its Herbert Museum. But uh, that's not the only place visitors can come to see a bunch of old Herberts. Let's, <laughs> let's meet the teens. Please, on my left, Graham Garden and Barry Cry. And on my right, Tony Hawks and Timbrook Taylor. And ready to watch the scores and eager as ever to get them down on the desk next to me. Please welcome the delightful Samantha. Okay, our first round is all about totally misleading advice, so brace yourselves for non stop side splitting comedy. <laughs> there must be many more examples than that one, teams. So I'd like your suggestions, please, of advice that would be misleading for a first-time visitor to our shores when attending church or other religious events or occasions here. And Barry, will you start, please? During Mass, when the incense holder is swung, the congregation should shout, Darling, your handbag's on fire. <laughs> Tim, you'll find a handy wash basin inside every door. <laughs> Graham? Don't be too greedy when they pass round the plate. <laughs> Tony. When the organ stops playing, all move chairs. <laughs> you will find uh, last night's lottery numbers on a board above your head. <laughs> When the vicar says any just cause or impediment, the congregation should shout, she's a slapper. <laughs> Roman Catholics are a friendly bunch. <laughs> you, can even, you can even have a chat through the grill in the toilet cubicle. <laughs> Tears at funerals are considered to be a sign of weakness. <laughs> Jumping up and down and clapping is viewed more favourably. <laughs> and when the vicar says ashes to ashes, you reply, funk to funky, we know Major Tom's a junkie. Remember to spit the wine out before identifying it. <laughs> Hmm. 
If the priest should say there's something wrong with this microphone, the congregation should say, and also with you. <laughs> The teams are going to sing for us now in a round called One Song to the Tune of Another. It's a, it's a game of such pure simplicity that to offer an explanation would be an insult to the intelligent mind. So teams, what happens is... You'll each be allocated a song from which you'll take the words and discard the tune. It might help to think of it as separating an egg. The shell is the song containing the words or yolk and the tune or white. The yolk can be combined with milk, sugar and flour to make custard, a complete change of combination, but still food, while the white is thrown away, although personally I think that's a waste, and I like, I like to use it to make a light fluffy souffle. <laughs> Try it with grated fresh parmesan, or if you can't get... If you can't get fresh parmesan, a hard cheddar will do. And there you have it, two meals but very different, even though they come from the same shell. Now, I can see you're way ahead of me, teams. You're thinking, what about the possibility of salmonella poisoning? <laughs> well, every egg-based meal carries the risk of being spoiled by a stomach-churning, bowel-exploding little germ. <laughs> yes, there's always something to worry about. And we have Colin Sell at the piano. <laughs> Okay, Barry, we'll start with you. Will you sing the words of Talk to the Animals from Dr. Doolittle to the tune of You'll Never Walk Alone? If we could talk to the animals, just imagine it. Chatting to a chimp in chimpanzee. Imagine talking to a tiger, chatting to a cheetah. What a neat achievement it would be if we could talk to the animals, learn their languages, maybe take an animal degree. We'd study elephant and eagle, buffalo and bee. Guinea pig and flea. We would converse in polar bear and python. Okay. Okay, Tim now, would you please sing the words of Eric Clapton's song, Cocaine, to the tune of The Sun Has Got His Hat On. <laughs> if you want to hang out, you've got to take her out. Cocaine, if you want to get down, get down on the ground. She don't lie, she don't lie. She don't like cocaine If you've got bad news you want to kick them blues Cocaine when your day is done and you've got to run Cocaine she don't lie, she don't lie, she don't like the cocaine If your thing is gone and you want to ride on cocaine Don't forget this fact cocaine she don't lie, she don't like cocaine <laughs> Tony, would you please sing the words of the Sex Pistols' Anarchy in the UK to the tune of I Could Have Danced All Night. I am an antichrist, I am an anarchist, don't know what I want, but I know how to get it. I want to destroy the passerby, because I want to be anarchy. No dog's body in the city. It's the only way to be, is this the MPLA? I thought it was the UK or just another country, another council, Tennessee. I want to be an anarchist. Get pissed and destroy.
Okay, Graham now, would you please sing the words of George Formby's When I'm Cleaning Windows to the tune of Walking in the Air from the Snowman. <laughs> Now I go cleaning windows <laughs> to earn an honest bar for a nosy parker. It's an interesting job. <laughs> now it's a job that just suits me. A window cleaner you would be. If you can see what I can see when I'm cleaning windows. <laughs> Honeymooning couples too, you should see them bill and coo. You'd be surprised at things they do when I'm cleaning windows. In my profession I work hard but I'll never stop. I'll climb this blinking ladder till I get right to the top. Let's survive a truly classic game now called Dropping Things. This is where the teams are blindfolded and have to identify things being dropped. <laughs> the show with any luck. I brought along a selection of common or garden objects to be dropped for the team's delight. As each object is dropped, the team should attempt to guess what it is and make a note of it on the paper provided. Okay, teams, don blindfolds. Yes, Tim. Don blindfolds, Australian fast bowler of the 50s. <laughs> okay, let the dropping commence. If you're ready, teams, the first object is being dropped now. Object number one. I think you've just dropped your fee for the series. Up. <laughs> okay, jot, jot it down. Jot it down. Uh, Here's object number two. Oh, oh Lord. Do you want us to write the answers down? Because I can't see anything. <laughs> Don't write it there, Tony. Right. Oh. <laughs> object. Here's object number wait a minute, one, two, three. Oh. oh, story of my life. <laughs> oh, one little shake and it'll be all over. <laughs> Have you got that down? Okay. That about Here's... the Gulf War. <laughs> Ready for the next one? Here's the next one. <laughs> I don't know what that was. I know what it landed on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, have, have you written it down? I have now. Oh, good. Mm. And finally, another one. You're right, Colin. <laughs> You're certainly improving, Colin. <laughs> Can we take our masks off this? <laughs> yes, you may, right now. <laughs> All done? Yeah, Good yeah. Lord. Good no. heavens, did I write that? <laughs> Great. It's time now for the next round, which is... Uh, <laughs> a, a backward general knowledge quiz. It's called, What's the Question? In this round, the questions are the answers to questions, and the teams have to answer with the questions to the answers. <laughs> this is a lateral thinking exercise of the type devised by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle for his Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson characters. An obvious pastime for two men who share a West End flat as they sit around in tasseled caps and silk dressing gowns. <laughs> for example, Holmes might say, I deduce the answer to be a limping Scotsman in gumboots on a muddy slope in the Hindu Kush, reading the Times obituary column. And Watson would quick as a flash say, Holmes, have you been at the opium again? <laughs> okay, now Tony, we'll start with you. What question might get this answer? I'm still alive. What will you hear after Geoffrey Archer's cremation? <laughs> <laughs> of 
right answer is what were Caligula's last words <laughs> <laughs> Barry now here's the answer what's the question a black and white cat um, what pets could be called barcode <laughs> And as everyone here knows, it's, uh, the question is, what is Postman Pat's pet? Graham, here's one for you. Put a tiger in your tank. How do you deal with a wild goat attacking your pet fish? <laughs> the answer is, what was the advertising slogan for Esso? Tim, wooden false teeth. Wooden false teeth. What do you get if you don't go private? <laughs> the uh, correct uh, question is what unusual feature did George Washington have? Um. <laughs> you learn on this program. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Educational. Yeah. You go out from this program saying that's taught me a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we know now why he cut down the cherry tree, anyway. <laughs> Tony, Michael Tibbet. How do you explain to Mr. Parkinson how to use a teapot? <laughs> the answer is, name a composer whose pieces are famously difficult to play. <laughs> Barry, clickety-click. <laughs> What do you hear when the Queen Mother sits down? <laughs> the answer was, of course, the bingo call for 66. Graham, <laughs> nearly 200 times a second. How often does a goldfish try to remember its name? <laughs> the goats keep putting it off. <laughs> The question should be, how many times does the ordinary housefly beat its wings? Tim, there's no mention of cats. What's different about the mouse version of, these are a few of my favourite things? <laughs> <laughs> and the correct uh, question is, how many times are cats mentioned in the King James Bible? <laughs> Tony, just... here's one for you, ten times the size. <laughs> what do you get if you sigh in an echo chamber? <laughs> and the right question is, how much bigger than Great Britain is Greenland? Hmm? And finally, oh, oh. <laughs> finally, Barry, feet first with your buttocks clenched together. <laughs> What's the best way to get through supermarket sweep? <laughs> Well, the, r the right question is, what's the best way to enter water from a great height? <laughs> <laughs> okay, teams, let's play Cheddar Gorge. Oh, just one of countless games based around British place names. There's also Biggles Wade, which involves crossing rivers dressed as a fictional air ace. <laughs> Cardigan Bay, where the players knit woolen garments for brown horses. And, of course, we mustn't forget that old favourite Burnham-on-Sea, a hilarious game played in coastal crematoria. <laughs> OK, I'd like the teams to embark on a sentence, please, uttering one word each at a time. The object is not to complete the sentence. If a full stop is reached, you'll hear this. <laughs> That's Samantha tweaks my horn. Tim, I'd like you... Tim, I'd like you to start, please. This week's subject is my favourite joke. Uh, there was this bunch of drunken sailors who went to the little house <laughs> on <laughs> the corner of <laughs> the next but one <laughs> street which was near the largest and probably the <laughs> widest, although <laughs> 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 
some of the sailors were in doubt about some of the people who were measuring the <laughs> cloaks of all the people who wore the <laughs> trousers which were baggy sorry what was that baggy <laughs> sorry i wasn't uh, calling you <laughs> <laughs> and quite trim yet strangely <laughs> in collusion with <laughs> one of the nuns <laughs> comma <laughs> who never drove out of the comma <laughs> the comma <laughs> a challenge van you could say the, co <laughs> the comma van <laughs> ah. a bit slow there <laughs> over the edge of the nearest and somehow <laughs> strangely above the only comatose person remaining in the adjacent <laughs> oh i've got to finish it nunnery damn <laughs> Is that really your favourite joke, Humphrey? <laughs> Musician's humour, they're yeah, different. Yeah. Only one he can remember. <laughs> it's time for another musical round now. This one is where the teams duet to combine the chirpy rasp of the kazoo with the ethereal ululation of the swanny whistle. Ah, uh, swanny and kazoo. Two words that go together like Burke and Hare, Humpty and Dumpty, or Richard and Judy. <laughs> Musical accompaniment at the piano will be provided by Colin Sell. These days, we only really know Colin for his work at the piano. But as a young lad, he cut his teeth on the harmonica. <laughs> Until his teacher explained he wasn't supposed to chew it. <laughs> Barry and Graham, you're to start, and I'd like you to provide a rendition of Goody Goody, and it's to feature Barry Cryer on the kazoo and Graham Garden on the swanny whistle. <laughs> That piano's out of tune. <laughs> You now, Tim and Tony, would you please provide a rendition of Sonny and Cher's I Got You, Babe, featuring Tony Hawks on the kazoo and Tim Brooke Taylor on the swanny whistle.
just can't get the paper now, can you, Tony? <laughs> well, well, I see it's very talking. nearly the end of the show, but it's just time to squeeze in a round of Fisherman's Radio Times. Samantha has to nip off to the coast now for a spot of lobster fishing with some lads on their boat. They never forget where they've dropped their pots because it's where Samantha tossed a large boy over the side. <laughs> So, team, suggestions, please, of TV and radio listings. <laughs> so, team, suggestions, please, of TV and radio listings likely to appear in a limited edition of the Radio Times, intended especially for fishermen. Tony, will you start, please? Live and kicking, so chuck it back in. <laughs> An audience with Cliff Pilchard. <laughs> the good old dace. <laughs> now on UK Goldfish. Sorry? <laughs> A question of Sprat. <laughs> <laughs> Any regional programmes from Wales? <laughs> Starfish in their eyes, followed by Blind Hake. Last night of the prawns <laughs> with Dietrich Fischer Discow singing salmon chanted evening <laughs> with the orchestra conducted by Halibut Van Karajan. Blue Peter, don't forget your stickleback plastic. <laughs> Alan Fishmart and Charlie Haddock in Grand Bait. <laughs> A documentary about the question that fish are always asking themselves. Who wants to be a breathing air? <laughs> a hook at bedtime? <laughs> the brill. <laughs> the coral maze. <laughs> Changing worms. <laughs> Clam busters. <laughs> Guppy the vampire. <laughs> <laughs> and so, ladies and gentlemen, as the elegant swan of time glides onto the bank of destiny, while the rescue dinghy of hope crashes into the first floor of the post office. <laughs> I notice it's the end of the show. So, from the team, Samantha, myself, and the good folk of Coventry, it's goodbye. Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and Tony Fawkes have been given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultant was Ian Pattinson and the producer was John Naismith. <laughs>
the Ferrari. <laughs> Before Coventry became so involved with heavy industry, the area was famous for its finely dyed blue fabrics. With only primitive equipment, the woders, as they were known, had to compress layers of cloth into vats of dye using their body weight by sitting on the top. They're long gone, but uh, there's a small band that has revived the noble art of dying on their ass. Let's meet them. <laughs> on my left, Graham Garden and Barry Cryer. <clears throat> on my right, Tony Hawks and Tim Brooke Taylor. And welcome, please, the lovely lady who every week places her seat on my left hand, our scorer, the... <laughs> the delightful Samantha. Yeah. Let's start with a brand new round called Ask a Silly Question. This is where the teams will suggest ludicrous questions which no one in their right mind would ever think to ask. The idea for this came to us last night after somebody asked, would Mr. Cryer like anything else before we close the bar? <laughs> okay, teams, examples, please, of some similarly silly questions. Tim, will you start, please? Would you call that a convincing win, Mr. President? <laughs> Barry, what's Carol Vorderman doing these days? <laughs> Tony? Is that George W. Bush discussing complex foreign policy with a group of world leaders who are greatly impressed with his deep understanding of the history <laughs> and politics of the region? Graham, would you like a little more off the top, Elton? <laughs> You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, Lord Archer. <laughs> Are you happy with my answer, Mr. Paxman? <laughs> Have you been working out again, Mr. Prescott? <laughs> Could you speak up, Mr. Paisley? Hello, not listening to Moneybox. <laughs> Are those people on their way to the dome? <laughs> well, that's enough about me. Why don't we talk about you, Anthea? <laughs> Will Coventry City be involved in a relegation battle at all this year? Beethoven, are you deaf or what? <laughs> Hello, rail track. Any delays expected at all? <laughs> right, the teams are going to sing along with some favourite discs now in pick-up song. Samantha has been choosing records for the teams with the assistance of the elderly staff of the BBC Gramophone Archive. Some of their old seven inches are looking a bit worn now, but... <laughs> they were all quite big back in the 60s. She's kindly picked the fluff off them and is ready to pump up the volume. <laughs> At my signal, she'll turn the volume down, but the singer should continue until the music returns. If you're within a bee's knee of the original teams, I'll be awarding points, and points mean prizes, and prizes mean forces open by leverage. What do prizes mean? <laughs> No wonder Bruce left ITV. <laughs> this week's prize is just a thing to control wayward kitchen appliances. It's this electric kettle prod. <laughs> okay, Tim, you can start. Would you please accompany the lovely Dana with her Eurovision winning song, All Kinds of Everything. <laughs> Butterflies and bees, sailboats and fishermen, things of the sea, smelly socks, cuckoo clocks, 
early morning dew. Nine months of pregnancy remind me of you. Seagulls and aeroplanes. I should have been president. Things of the sky. Winds that go howling. Breezes that sigh. City side. Neon light. I think you've gone on to the next track. <laughs> Tony, your turn now. Would you please accompany Dave Edmonds singing his big hit, I Hear You... Please. You're going to be in there all day. <laughs> I hear you, darling. Go back where you've been. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> I beg you not to go, but you say goodbye. And now you're telling me all your lies. I hear you, darling. Finally, Barry and Graham, you, you can sh share this one. Will you oh, please accompany you. Mungo Jerry and his band singing In the Summertime? <laughs> ooh. 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 When the weather is high right up. And touch the sky When the weather's fine You got women, you got women on your mind Have a drink, have a drive Go out and see what you can find If her daddy's rich Take her out for a meal If her daddy's poor Just do what you feel Scoot along to the lake To a town or return at 25 when the sun goes down, you can make it, make it good. Where were they? Hmm. <laughs> well, we all look forward to this next regular favourite called Sound Shiraz, although not as much as the one called Thank You and Good Night. <laughs> The game is based on Give Us a Clue, starring Lionel Blair, the man whose talent made the show what it is today. <laughs> Padding for the schedule on cable channel 47. <laughs> Our version is an exact copy of this mind game, made hilarious by its totally silent performance. Except that the teams are allowed to speak. <laughs> Okay, Tim and Tony, you're to start, please, and your title will be displayed to our theatre audience via the laser display board. And here for the people at home, here's the mystery voice. The seven-year itch. The seven-year itch. Right, you're guessing this one, Barry and Graham. Off you go, Tim and Tony. It's four words, and it was a film, and it's a play. We don't know whether it's a book, but film and play. And it goes something like this. Ah. Hello there. Hello. Yeah, I see meeting you in St. Mark's Square. It's lovely, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. How are you? Uh, don't do that. Sorry. <laughs> Colin, could you make some music time passing? Actually. <laughs> Hello there. Uh, how are you doing? Yeah, oh, back in St. Mark's yes, Square. Yes, it's lovely yeah. here, isn't oh, it? Gosh, yes. How long has it been Oh, it's about a year, yeah. I would say. Yeah. Don't do that. Right. <laughs> Hello there. Hello. How are you? you? I haven't seen you for a while. Oh, about yes. four years now. Well, uh, yeah. Could be, yes. Oh, Something like that. Yeah, Certainly right. been some considerable time. Yeah, don't do that. All right. <laughs> oh, hello there. Hello. You've you grown a beard, I see. Yes, I have. Yeah. 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 Well, do you know it's been eight years since we originally met up here? Yeah. Has it been eight years? Yes. Got in a flat. Yes, yes, I see that's all cleared up though. Yes. <laughs> yes, it cleared up about a year ago. Yeah, about a year ago. <laughs> see you then. <laughs> Well, 
go on, Barry Graham. Um, Scabrous complaint. I know um, what you did last summer. <laughs> <laughs> Seven years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Seven year itch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Right, your turn, Barry and Graham. Your title's now being exhibited on the laser display board, and here again is the mystery voice for listeners at home. The Merchant of Venice. The Merchant of Venice. Well, it's a play. It's a play. And it's four words. Gather your wellies. Gather your nice wellies. <laughs> The end. <laughs> I've no mm. idea. Have you? Death in Venice. That sounded. Like... <laughs> that was us. Oh. 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 The audience are giving you a clue. That's the first well, time ever. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Um, <laughs> Let's put us on the spot. I think the Venice bit must be right. That was the uh, <laughs> Venice um, gondolier. Gary, a wellies. What's he doing? He's selling, selling shoe Wellington, Wellington boots. boots. <laughs> <laughs> this well, is really sad. <laughs> well, what do our fans buy in the interval? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do they buy? Our books and tapes. What do you call them? <laughs> Goods. <laughs> Longer than that. I was going to say Anthea Turner. Merchandise. <laughs> the Merchant of Venice. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and doesn't it just? <laughs> <laughs> now, as our links with Europe grow ever closer, teams, many aspects of our lives are being modified to suit EC regulations. And the most recent to get the Brussels treatment are our favourite board games. As an example, the new Euro standard chess sets have to include a French king, which has had the head cut off. <laughs> the Italian bishop can now only mate with a queen. <laughs> While the German pawn has to wear a beard, flared trousers and have an 18 certificate. <laughs> So we may as well get used to Europeanization teams and to get ahead of the game we'll play a round of Euro Scrabble. This is exactly the same as the English language version except for the language. So, so if you care to help yourselves to the designated number of letters, you can start Barry. Right, uh, thank you, Graham. Uh, racking them up. Oh, ah, ah. Contra Tom. That's a cat fight. How many letters did you take out of the bag? They're still, the results are still coming in. <laughs> well, already on the board, someone has put down Rien. Uh, oh, I've got six R's here, so I can add them to make it Rien. <laughs> I've got B A D E N B A D E N. That's German for two baths a day. <laughs> and of course, it's a double word. <laughs> mm, I, I've yep. got um, the right letters here. I, I, I can go for the French mobile gigolo service, Coco Van. <laughs> I've got, oh, that's not bad, triple letter. I've got sangria, which means without Germain. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I'm right. no, Sorry, it's mine, it's mine. Go on, go on, go on. Um, uh, those D, D I S, French French. So that's already down, so I'll add to the front and to the back yeah. to make Euro Disney. And <laughs> get a triple letter score for the Q. <laughs> I've, I've got another double word, a bit oh. like uh, oh. things. Yeah, um, oh. I can do it. Try, I can do de de, yeah, which is French for tutu.
Yes, there you can. Yeah. That's very good. That's, that's, good. that's 493 points. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I've got a belter here. That's English. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got it. It's all going. Talia Telly, which is the Italian state television. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can just add a, a bit to what are already down here, and um, I can get the French word for funny beer, <laughs> uh, brouhaha. <laughs> ah! yeah. Well, that leaves me a space there to get the German word for itch, which is Seite unter ich das Schritzenfühler sehen. It's there. It's there. So I'll take twenty-three new letters. <laughs> Three new boards and Poland. <laughs> it's time now for a demonstration of interpersonal relationship skills in a round of chat up lines. The teams have been putting in some research for this by browsing through the Lonely Hearts ads, and it seems one way of appealing to a potential life partner is to list hobbies and recreations. Tony is keen on tennis. Tim plays golf, Graham enjoys reading, while Barry takes frequent long walks in the country. Although that's not strictly a hobby, he just keeps forgetting where he lives. <laughs> Another way is to tailor your introduction to suit your occupation. So teams, I'd like you please to suggest chat-up lines that might prove useful to anyone who works in the building trade. Barry, will you start please? It's a hard hat, and it's not alone. <laughs> I can see that you're just here for the crack, and I just happen to have one poking out the top of my trousers. <laughs> I hope you don't mind a bit of banging. <laughs> I don't just lay bricks, you know. Do you, uh, do you want to find out why they call me Enormous Bill? <laughs> because, uh, because it'll be twice the size of your estimate. <laughs> what are you thinking of stripping it all off, then? <laughs> How do you fancy your screws at trade prices? Oh, well, this lot will have to come down. <laughs> Do you want to get felt laid down in the loft? <laughs> if you're looking for someone who can be in and out within six weeks, then I'm your man. <laughs> you won't know I'm here. <laughs> Okay, we have a... <laughs> dear, oh dear, who put this in? <laughs> That's it. Okay. It's now time to play the game called Mornington Crescent. But first, <laughs> I notice we've received yet another letter, and this year's, this year's comes from a Mrs. Trellis of North Wales. She writes, Dear Mr. Titchmarsh, would you please come round with Tommy and Charlie and the other bloke who isn't allowed to speak, and do up my garden as a surprise for me. Uh, I'd like the gravel path removed, the rose beds need the gravel taking off, Bedding plants can go where the gravel feature is, and the privet needs trimming, although you'll need to clear the gravel off it first. <laughs> Yours sincerely, Mrs. Trellis. P.S. Any time before three would be best, as the tide comes in at half past. <laughs> <laughs> and on with the game, and as you'd expect, the famous Coventry ruling will apply. Tim, will you start, please? Yeah. Uh, Gospel Oak. 
Yeah, I've never played that before first. I... Mm. Okay. Go. King Street. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. King Street, right. Uh, Tooting Broadway. So... Right. Glad you spotted. <laughs> That's how clever that was. Graham? King Street. Uh, Tooting Broadway. Old Kent Road. <laughs> nice to see old Ken's in tonight. <laughs> that opens it up, the diagonal. Embankment. Yeah. Um, it's got to be uh, Seven Sisters. You see, Baz, after you've gone Embankment, yeah. that leaves me open to go Seven Sisters. Well, that's, that's right. right. Yeah. So it's Warren Street. Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. Gooch. 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 I can go there. Yeah. Straight in. Gooch. Straight in. Gooch Street. <laughs> but um, you just no, repeat it. It's a follow-on from. Uh, yeah. Gooch. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm just thinking. Gooch well, is all right. No, no, but I mean, I, I can. Well, I know there's better, but I mean, I was in a corner. <laughs> I wasn't entirely happy with Seven Sisters. <laughs> Blimey, mate! You expect a lot. <laughs> So I do uh, Clapham Common. Oh, yeah. Well, hang on. Yeah, Water, yeah, Waterloo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. King's Road. Yeah. King's uh, Road or Waterloo. King's... <laughs> Houston Square. Oh, oh Square. Sud Sudbury Hill. Yeah. Fulham Road. It's my girl. Fairlock. <laughs> Fairlock. Embankment. Uh, Mornington Crater. Oh! Well, it's very nearly the end of the show, but there's just time for the teams to announce the late arrivals at the equestrian ball. Samantha tells me she's been training as a jockey for a leading racehorse owner. She's hoping to be entered at Newmarket next week for two... <laughs> for 2,000 guineas... So, teams, your announcements, please, of the late arrivals at a ball for horse lovers, race goers, and the like. Tim, will you start? Uh, will you welcome, please, <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> Der Starter's Orders, and their daughter, Anne Der Starter's Orders. <laughs> They're the first here, so feel a bit alone, make them welcome. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Furlong and their eight children, Chris, Debbie, Andrew, Simon, Sue, Sarah, Stephen, Paul, and coming now to the final furlong. <laughs> Bob. Pretty welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. Steeplechase. <laughs> and their grandmother, Nellie, with the vicious false teeth. <laughs> their gran, Nasha, Nell, Steeplechase. <laughs> Oh, this is wonderful. Look who's gracing us with her presence. Her Majesty the Queen Mother. Hip, hip. Oh, sorry. You're welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. Tucky Darby and their son, Kenneth. <laughs> Lord and Lady Surrey, they're going to the boozy party on the roof. That's the Surreys with the binge on top. <laughs> There's Peggy Mount. With her friend, Lucy Lastic. Oh, they're off! <laughs> Very welcome, please. Yeah, welcome. Mr. and Mrs. Bennett, look at the size of that stallion. <laughs> <laughs> and their son, Gordon Bennett. Look at the stallion. You're welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. Cart and their son, Orson. <laughs> Uh, worship the mayor. <laughs> William Hill and his wife Coral and their lad Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Beano Pony and their son Al. <laughs> Trotted in late, but welcome. <laughs> and so welcome from Spain. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Fence down and no time faults and their only son, just one fence down. <laughs> oh, God. 
And so, ladies and gentlemen, as the la-la of time plays with the tinky-winky of destiny, and the dipsy of fate sits on the pole of eternity, I notice it's the end of the show. So from Samantha, the teams, myself, and the fine folk of Coventry, it's goodbye. Barry Fryer, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and Tony Hawkes have been given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultant was Ian Pattinson and the producer was John Naismith. <laughs>
the absolute shower. <laughs> Tim, who wants to be a milliner? <laughs> I may have mentioned, I can't remember, that I missed an Oscar by that when I wrote the film script Shakespeare in Hove. <laughs> <laughs> Saving private railways. <laughs> the Witches of Gatwick. <laughs> Anne Whittacombe Uncovered. <laughs> Gardeners question Tim. <laughs> Two little known plays by Oscar Mild. The importance of being Kevin. <laughs> and Lady Windermere's fan belt. HMS Pinochet. <laughs> the lion, the witch, and the flat pack dressing table with <laughs> That all? Peter Mandelson, International Man of Mystery. <laughs> <coughs> Syphilis in Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the teams are going to sing for us now in a game called One Song to the Tune of Another. <laughs> you You'd have to be lacking even a basic knowledge of harmony and rhythm to fail to grasp this concept. So listen up, Jeremy. <laughs> a song is comprised of two main constituents, the words and the tune, a bit like a bottle of shampoo and conditioner, in fact. The shampoo element can be envisaged as the words, cleaning the grease and grime from our hair, although obviously the words of a song don't literally do that. This is supported by the conditioner, leaving our locks shiny and manageable and eliminating unsightly split ends in the same way that the tune supports the words, except that words don't suffer from split ends. <laughs> <laughs> now, teams, I can see you've grasped the basics already, but yes, there is. There is one question that still needs an answer. What about dandruff? Well, even the best quality shampoo and conditioner won't always guarantee to rid us of an unsightly irritant that keeps coming back no matter how hard you try. <laughs> <laughs> At the piano, Colin Sells. <laughs> okay, Barry, we'll start with you. Would you please sing the words of Bebop Alula? to the tune of We'll Gather Lilacs. <laughs> Bebopalula, she's my baby. Bebopalula, I don't mean maybe. Bebopalula, she's my baby. Be Papa Lula, I don't mean maybe. Be Papa Lula, she's my baby love. My baby love, my baby love. She's the girl in the red, blue jeans. She's the queen of all the. Okay, it's you now, Tim. Would you please sing the words of Whiter Shade of Pale by Procol Harum to the tune of We're Off to See the Wizard. <laughs> We skip the light fandango, turn cartwheels cross the floor. I was feeling kind of seasick, but the crowd called out for more. The room was humming harder as the ceiling flew away. When we called out for well, another drink, the waiter bought a tray. <laughs> and, and so it was that later, as the mailer told his tale, oh, hey, Okay, Graham now, would you please sing the words of Joe Dolce's Shut Up You Face to the tune of Que Sera Sera. <laughs> when I was a boy, J 
just about a fifth the grade. Mama used to say, don't stay out late with the bad boys, always shoot a pool. Giuseppe, don't funk a school. A boy, it make me sick. All the things I gotta do, I can't get no kicks. Always gotta follow rules. Boy, it make me sick. Just to make a lousy box I gotta feel like a fool And mama used to say What's the matter you, hey? Got no respect What do you think you do? Why you look so bad? It's not so bad uh, Shut up your face <laughs> Oh, I've finished. <laughs> Jeremy, reducing the words of Cool for Cats by Squeeze to the tune of Windmills of Your Mind. <laughs> Seems unlikely. <laughs> the Indians send signals from the rocks above the pass. The cowboys take position in the bushes and the grass. The squaw is with the corporal, she is tied against the tree. She doesn't mind the language, it's the beating she don't need. She lets loose all the horses when the corporal is asleep. And he wakes to find the fires dead and arrows in his hands. And Davy Crockett rides around. And says it's cool for cats. The next round is called Living Art, and in it the teams are going to share their knowledge of fine art. In fact, the teams are surprisingly knowledgeable in the field of art. While recently painting in Ireland, an expert told Jeremy his seascape could easily be mistaken for a bacon. It was just where the paint had gone streaky in the rain. <laughs> Tim spends a lot of his time in front of a bowl of fruit filling in his still life. <laughs> but his agent says things should improve soon. <laughs> Graham is an expert on the Cubist School, thanks to his job at the Early Learning Centre. <laughs> and Barry was telling us he recently attended evening classes where he painted a young lady in the nude. Well, I say nude. He didn't actually take his socks off. <laughs> but have somewhere to put your brushes. <laughs> okay, teams, I'd like you each to perform for us a living representation of a famous work of art for the opposing team to guess. Tim and Jeremy, you're the first, and your piece is being relayed to the studio audience via the technical wizardry of the laser display board. <laughs> While for listeners at home, here's the mystery voice. Rodaz, The Kiss. Rodaz, the kiss. So if you care to assume the positions? Right. <laughs> just, just give us um, a minute to get ready. Yeah. Um, sorry. Excuse um, me. Oh, God. Oh, it's chilly, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I like oh, those. Where did you get those? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I them. <laughs> yeah. Now, who's going to be whom? Um, what's, is that a birthmark? No. What is it then? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's uh, it's a mole. It's a tattoo. It's a tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> a tattoo of a mole. That's right. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, I see. Right, and that's where he lives. Yeah. All yeah. right. <laughs> All right. Oh no, one of them blind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? What's that? Oh, that's my appendix. Shouldn't that be inside? Oh, God. <laughs> I'll be the one that sits on the marble. Careful now. <laughs> oh, now you've lost it. I have to. <laughs> <laughs> I've won that. <laughs> yes. Look, wh which one am I going to be? Which do you want to be? You look fairly dominating to me. All right, I'll, all right, I'll, be, I'll be him then. All right, well, I'll be her. You'll be her. <laughs> it is cold, isn't it? It is cold. Yeah. Yeah. Gone, right? Cocktail yeah. sausages. Yeah. Uh, no tongues. Right, all um, right, here we go. <laughs> Was that all right? 
Oh, well, good for me. <laughs> Have you finished? I'm just getting my jodhpurs back on. Yeah. All right, I'll put my socks on then. Mm. Oh, they've, they've, got, they've got brushes in them. <laughs> Must be the kiss, mustn't it? Yes. Barry and Graham, the title of a further work of art will be displayed to the audience via the laser display board, and here's the mystery voice of her. Tracy Emmons' bed. Tracy Emmons' bed. Barry and Graham, please start your physical reproduction now. <laughs> It's a work of art. And uh, we're hiding under it. Yeah. <clears throat> Has she gone yet? I don't care. I'm not staying here. No. Oh, dear. Hasn't she got a hoover? <laughs> What's this? Oh, oh please. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't mind, but here's the other two. Oh, no. <laughs> <clears throat> no, no, no. What? Two Japanese blokes bouncing about on it oh. now. <laughs> Not again. The end. <laughs> I have no idea what this is. You would be below the picture, did you say? We were of art. Under the piece. But is it really art, this? Is it really? <laughs> this kind of... absolutely... <laughs> There are two Japanese blokes. Two Japanese blokes. And one went into a chemist and said... <laughs> <laughs> We're not very close to this. Time's up. <laughs> you were very close when you said, but is it art? Yes. It's, it's by Damien Hirst. Uh, Paul Simon. Ah, very good. It is by Damien Hirst. No. 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 <laughs> are you a huge piece of sculpture? No. No. No, Millennium no, Dome. A little bed-sized piece Little bed-sized thing. Yes. Time's up. Oh, right. <laughs> Tracy Emin got ten of them oh. to do. <laughs> what time do you call this? <laughs> Could you just remind me what the Japanese blokes were doing again? They bounced up and down on a bed. Don't you remember? Two you Japanese guys, performance artists. They came in and bounced up and down. It's rather like the two Japanese guys who met in the street and one said Ahiba and the other one said Odoa and the first one said Abakiya and the other one said Obatua. Oh, you've heard it. Sorry. <laughs> Finally, Tim and Jeremy, one last artwork for you now. Its title is now being displayed to the audience and here once more is the mystery voice for listeners at home. Whistler's Mother. Whistler's Mother. Okay, Tim and Jeremy, please begin your body sculpture now. Sorry, Mum. <laughs> Whistler's bed. <laughs> just, just above it. Whistler. It's arrangement in grey and black. Yes. Whistler's mother. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's try another round. Oh, uh. And I know our audience will whoop with joy when I tell them that the teams are going to write resignation letters. <laughs> and gasp in disappointment when I tell them the letters aren't their own. <laughs> in our modern fast-moving world, companies often retain high flyers in their jobs with large contract bonuses. And in fact, our own Barry Cryer was once tied to a post by golden handcuffs. <laughs> At least that was how he was discovered during the police raid. <laughs> But when it does come to making a career move, it's important to use the right words. So, teams, I'd like you please to suggest letters of resignation that might have been penned by famous people, both past and present, or by ordinary folk, to well-known organisations. And, Tim, will you start, please? Uh, Henry VIII, um, I'm leaving as I feel it's inappropriate that I should continue as chairman of Relate. Ludwig van Beethoven, now that I've gone completely deaf, BT have offered me a job in directory inquiries. <laughs> Got one here from Michael Portillo saying I'd like to create an opening for a younger man. <laughs> oh. 
That's one from Dirty Harry. <laughs> there he is. Uh, when I said, go ahead, punk, make my day, I thought we were alone in the gents. <laughs> One here from from Bertie Bassett. <laughs> I'm leaving for all sorts of reasons. <laughs> There's one here from Peter Mandelson. No, that's ridiculous. That would never happen. Um... <laughs> There's one here from Yasser Arafat. Um, I've decided to go back to playing the drums with the Beatles. One here to Alcoholics Anonymous, I resign. Cheers. <laughs> These are meant to be fictional, Barry. <laughs> the editor of the Daily Mail, I've been doing a lot of thinking. <laughs> Van Gogh, I must give up my work, my glasses keep falling off. <laughs> We have one here from William of Orange, which says, I'm worried that some people might be taking me too seriously. <laughs> right from, uh, from Anne Widdicombe. Oh, yeah. Politics is no career for the new face of Estee Lauder. <laughs> <laughs> Cynthia Payne, I'm alarmed at the number of politicians entering the profession. <laughs> The teams are going to perform musically for us now. The round's called Swanee Kazoo, where the teams combine the delicate trill of the Swanee whistle with the chirpy buzz of the kazoo. Yes, Swanee and Kazoo. Two words that go together as naturally as cannon and ball, little and large, or long and forgotten. <laughs> Piano accompaniment will be provided as ever by Colin Sell, who was telling us that following a recent course, he now knows Handel's work. What great training days they run in B&Q's door department. <laughs> Barry and Graham, we'll start with you. Will you please provide us with a version of When I Was a Lad from Gilbert and Sullivan's oh. HMS Pinafore to feature Barry Cryer on kazoo and Graham Garden on Swanee Whistle. <laughs> Will you please provide us with a version of The Lion Sleeps Tonight, featuring Tim Brooke Taylor on the Swanee Whistle and Jeremy Hardy on the Kazoo. it's very nearly the end of the show but there's still time to announce the late arrivals at the military ball Samantha has to nip out to meet a nice old colonel who's promised to show her his parade ground and might even let her inspect his privates <laughs> so
So while she's away enjoying that, I'll ask the teams to announce the late arrivals at a society ball for soldiers and other military personnel. Fully welcome Mr. and Mrs. Terry Maneuvers and their daughter Millie Terry Maneuvers. <laughs> Will you welcome please Mr. and Mrs. Do you think you are, you miserable little man? And their only son, you, that's... Who do you think you are? <laughs> miserable little man. And from Germany we have Frau and her... <laughs> Matic weapon and the, and their son automatic weapon. <laughs> All the way from Spain, oh, yeah. Senor and Senora pace forward and their son Juan pace forward. <laughs> and really welcome, please, from yeah. the Light Brigade, Mr. and Mrs. Lee Gonward, and their son Arthur Lee Gonward. <laughs> And please welcome Mr. and Mrs. Voidable Civilian Casualties and their daughter, Anna Voidable Civilian <laughs> Casualties. Will you welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. D. Beaches and their son, Norman <laughs> <laughs> And here come Mr. and Mrs. Nade. Oh, yeah? Yes, and their furious son, Angry Nade. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Ertrat and their son, <laughs> Des Ertrat. <laughs> Used to be Field Marshal Montgomery's personal choir boy. Wrote a book called I Was Monty's Treble. <laughs> <laughs> and a very warm welcome, please, for Mr. and Mrs. This Minute. <laughs> and their son, <laughs> their son, Brigadier This Minute. <laughs> Will you please bend your knees for the Princess Maureen and Queen Maureen? They're the Royal Marines. <laughs> <laughs> Little more respect, please. Two old chums over there. Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> Toffiser. <laughs> Their son, Warren Toffiser. <laughs> A particular welcome, please, for Mr. and Mrs. Bennett. Two years natural service would teach these young hooligans a thing or two. <laughs> and their son, Gordon oh. Brenning, two years natural service teaching young hooligans a thing too. And so, ladies and gentlemen, as the sleeping princess of time lies undisturbed on the pea of fate, <laughs> thanks, of course, to the rubber bedsheet of eternity, <laughs> I notice it's the end of the show, so from the team, Samantha, myself and the fine folk of High Wycombe, it's goodbye. Barry Pryor, Graham Garden, Jeremy Hardy and Tim Brooke Taylor will be given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultant was Ian Pattinson, and the producer was John Naismith. <laughs>
Let's meet the teams. They are on my left, Graham Garden and Barry Cryer. And on my right, Jeremy Hardy and Tim Brooke Taylor. And eager to do her bit for the teams on the desk next to me, please welcome our scorer, the most fragrant, Samantha. Let's start with historical headlines, where we take a fond look back at those days of yore. Before the advent of newspapers, teams, many varied methods of disseminating news were employed. For example, important messages were sent attached to arrows by the African pygmy tribes in the high grass plains. The most common by far was, where the hell are we? <laughs> teams, I'd like you to suggest for us how today's newspapers and other periodicals might have reported historical events of great moment. And the event is, the Druids build Stonehenge. Graham, will you start, please? Uh, yes, from the Wiltshire Gazette. <laughs> Roof of Salisbury Dome blows off. <laughs> Tim. Melody maker. Stones stop touring. <laughs> Barry. This is from the sport. Oh, yeah. Pop-up corn circle sensation. <laughs> Jeremy. This is from the Building Times. Balfour Beatty insists Circle will be ready for Midsummer's Eve. <laughs> well, there's another one here from The Sport. Oh, yeah? Oh, yes. yes. It says, Giant set of alien false teeth ate my virgin. <laughs> <laughs> Daily Telegraph. Outrage as Pile of Stones wins Turner Prize. <laughs> My hair from The Guardian from Corrections and Clarifications. Oh, really? oh. Yesterday's headline, <laughs> Pests Welcome the Solstice, should have read Priests <laughs> Welcome the Sausage. <laughs> Let's try another. This time the event is Charles Darwin publishes The Origin of Species. Tim, will you please start this one? Monkey News. <laughs> Darwin's findings offensive. <laughs> from the Daily Mail, did our ancestors come down from the trees? See Paul Johnson on page 14. <laughs> Catholic Herald, oh, bugger. <laughs> and there's one from the Guardian Corrections and Clarifications, Colin. <laughs> Yesterday's headline, Bishops Tickle Darwin's Monkey Theory. <laughs> Should have read, Bishops Tackle Darwin's Donkey Terry. <laughs> the teams are going to sing along with some records now in Pick Up Song. Samantha. Samantha kindly took all four team members down into the gramophone archive earlier to help choose their songs. It's quite cramped down there, but she managed to squeeze them in two abreast. <laughs> <laughs> the first singer's disc is ready, and I notice Samantha's left it out, ready to be given a spin. Each, each player should sing along and then continue solo when, at my signal, she turns the volume down. If on the music's return you're within a gnat's crotchet of the original teams, I'll be awarding points, and points mean what they drink in pubs in Somerset. What do points mean? <laughs> <laughs> this week's prize is just the thing to clear those annoying balls of fluff that so often accumulate in the belly button. <laughs> it's this navel decongestant spray. <laughs> okay, Barry, you're going to start, and I'd like you to accompany Frank Sinatra singing You Make Me Feel So Young. Oh, good. You make me feel so young You make me feel so spring has sprung And every time I see you grin I'm such a happy individual The moment that you speak I wanna go play hide and seek I wanna go and bounce the moon Just like a toy balloon you 
And I, I just like a couple of tots running across a meadow, picking up lots of forget me nuts. You make me feel so young. You make me feel. Okay, it's your turn now, Tim. Will you please accompany the monkeys singing "Daydream Believe"? <laughs> Oh, I could hide neath the wings of the bluebird as she sings. The six o'clock alarm would never ring, but it rings and I rise, wipe the sleep out of my eyes. My shaving razor's cold and it stings. <laughs> Cheer up, sleepy Jean. Oh, what can it mean to a daydream believer and a homecoming queen? <laughs> you thought of me as a white knight on his steed. Now you know how happy I am. Okay, it's you now. You now, Graham. Would you please accompany Mandy Miller singing Nelly the Elephant? <laughs> to Bombay, <laughs> a travelling circus came. They brought an intelligent elephant, and Nelly was her name. One dark night, she slipped her eye and chain. And off she ran to him to stand and was never seen again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Oh, Nelly the elephant packed a trunk and said goodbye to the circus. Goodbye. Off she went with a trumpety trump, 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 trump. <laughs> Nelly the elephant packed a trunk and trundled back to the jungle. Off she went with a trumpety trump, 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 trump. Stuck. <laughs> and finally, Jeremy, would you please accompany Buddy Holly singing his lovely True Love Way? Of course. <laughs> Just you know why. Why you and I will by and by no true love ways. Go for it, Jezza. Sometimes we'll sigh. Sometimes we'll cry. Boarding at gate three. <laughs> and you know why. Just you and I. No true love way. Throughout the day. <laughs> our true love ways. Will bring us joys to share with those who really care. Sometimes we'll sigh with those who care. Okay, let's try something else. Anything else. <laughs> The next game is a quickie round, giving ample time for the teams to give vent to their full acting range. It's called Sound Charades, and it's played in tribute to that great TV show, Give Us a Clue, where the players conveyed a film title without speaking and within a strict time limit. The undisputed mime maestro was, of course, Lionel Blair, and who can forget the look of relish in his face when he was given two minutes on the African Queen? <laughs> In the original game, the players weren't allowed to speak. However, we found that didn't work at all well on radio, and so, we, <laughs> so we've allowed the teams to speak. And then we found that this didn't work at all well. <laughs> Never mind. Barry and Graham, you're going to start, please, and your title will shortly be displayed to the audience via laser display. For listeners at home, here's the mystery voice. The Grinch. The Grinch. Uh, this is a film. It yeah. is. Two words. Two words. 
Off we go. Here we go. Hamish! Yeah, I oh. do go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You'll have, uh, you'll have had your tea. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, but, oh no, I see you're, uh, you're having a meal, your Aye. festive lunch there. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Pull up a kilt and sit down. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh my word, what a magnificent bird! Thank you. Well, it's not a turkey, is it? Oh no, it's not a turkey. <laughs> pheasant? No, it's no a pheasant. McNugget? No. <laughs> No, no. This... This is unique. It's a rare cross, the result of a grouse. A grouse, oh. mark you. Mating with a wee finch. Oh! <laughs> Shings, that's a one-off. Aye. That's just what the finch said. <laughs> Oh, his soul brings the tears to your eyes. Yeah, but yeah. What, what, do you, what, what do you call it? A, a, a frouse? Oh, no, no, no. Quite the reverse. Oh. <laughs> Last tango in Paris. <laughs> oh, so close. Could it possibly be the Grinch? Yeah. Oh. Right, your turn, Tim and Jeremy. Your title's now being exhibited on the laser display board, and here again is the mystery voice for listeners at home. The Sopranos. The Sopranos. So what is it? It's television. Television, two words. Two words, and it goes <coughs> something like this. Hey, you! You talking to me? Yeah, you! Mezzo! Nobody calls me Mezzo. What do they call you? Shorty. Okay, Shorty, I got a job for you. What kind of job? Saturday morning, it's a wedding. You sure it's a wedding? I don't want no funeral. Ain't gonna be no funeral. What if someone sings? You're supposed to sing, like a canary. I ain't no f***ing canary. <laughs> Listen, you gotta sing, Oh, for the wings of a dove. You're f***ing with me. <laughs> no, I ain't f***ing with you, you f <laughs> The end of our careers. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, it's a good edit. Um... <laughs> soprano. Soprano. Yeah. Soprano. You bleep with the fishes. <laughs> we come now to what's known in modern broadcasting parlance as a landmark event. So welcome to our spectacular brand new round, the Quiz of Quizzes. Right, fingers on buzzers, teams. How many legs have donkeys? <laughs> Hang on, somebody at the door. <laughs> Samantha, could you, can you go and see to it? Okay. Right, carry on. Tim. Four. Tim says four. Barry and Graham? Ooh. Higher. No, higher. No, no. Are you sure? Well, I don't think it's lower. Lower. Lo lower. 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 <laughs> You say lower. lower. Well, lower. the right answer is that no legs have donkeys. So you were right to go lower. <laughs> and Tim gets ten points. Tim. <laughs> Tim, question or nominate? Nominate Graham. No, the right answer is nominate Barry. <laughs> you lose ten points. Barry, what's the first letter of the word aardvark? Is it A, B, C or D? Oh, um, uh, can I go 50-50, Hump? <laughs> All right, computer, take away one wrong answer and one right answer. <laughs> <laughs> Barry, you have two wrong answers left. Which do you go for? <laughs> can I phone a friend? All right, if you must. Who are you calling? Um, Ian. Ian, this is Humphrey Littleton from Radio 2's Best of Jazz. Now, I know you can't... <laughs> I know you can't see the show. Uh, yes, I can. Why? Where are you? I'm here. I'm in the audience. <laughs> well, you were told to switch off your mobiles before the recording. Please switch yours off now. Oh, sorry. Barry. 
Ian. <laughs> Ian, what's the first... Ian? Hello, he's gone. Aardvark, does it start with C or D? Take a time. <laughs> Take a time. And ask the audience. <laughs> All right, go on then. <laughs> no, 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 no. Switch them all off. Barry, you're out of time. But let's see what our survey said. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, your turn. Can I have one off the top row and five little ones, please? <laughs> OK. There you are. That's one Dundee cake and five macaroons. <laughs> and your target is... Toad in the hole. <laughs> well? No, I've only got Toad in the blender. <laughs> well, three away, but that's only two points. Graham, your turn, and it's time for what happens next. Okay. Well. <laughs> um, well, what? What happens next? I don't know. I don't know. I've never played this before. Have a guess. Um, oh, okay. Well, what's supposed to happen next? The what happens next round. Well, what happens in that? I'm asking you. Well, I don't know. I mean, I've never heard this before. I mean, I, I come here in all good faith. I, I don't know what's supposed to happen. I'm not sure what's been going on so far anyway. I've no idea. I did just... And Graham was talking when the whistle went. <laughs> so you lose ten points. Well, teams, at the end of that round, you've banked a miserable 72p <laughs> out of a possible £10,000. <laughs> Who is letting you down? It's time to vote for who you think is the weakest link. Anne Robinson. <laughs> Anne Robinson. Anne Robinson. I'd have to say Anne Robinson as well. Tim, why Anne Robinson? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, Anne Robinson, you are the weakest link. Goodbye. <laughs> we have a musical round next. <laughs> called Musical Families. It's quite remarkable how many singing acts involve members of a family. We think of the Everly Brothers, the Nolan Sisters, the Osmonds. Coincidentally, pianist Colin Sell was once mistaken for a member of the Partridge family. It took him nearly three weeks to pick the lead shot out of his back. <laughs> OK, teams, let's create some new musical families of our own. Barry, you can start. I'd like you to sing Rod Stewart's song, Sailing, in the style of Rod's distant relative, the actor James Stewart. Sailing. Uh, I'm sailing. Still looking for that sound. Home again. Across the sea. Uh, I'm sailing. Stormy waters. To be near you. To 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 to, to be free. Flying. Uh, I'm flying. I once played Lindbergh. You probably saw it. It's usually on on TV in the afternoon. I'm flying. Passing high clouds. That's pretty painful. <laughs> to be with you. Who can say? I'm off of my scooter now. Jeremy, now, I'd like you to sing Tom Jones's big hit, Kiss, in the style of his little Welsh nephew, Aled. 
<laughs> you don't have to be beautiful <laughs> to turn me on. <laughs> Just need your body, baby, <laughs> from dusk till dawn. <laughs> My hormones are kicking in, I think. Don't need experience. <laughs> To turn me out, got air under my arms now. You just leave it all up to me. I'll show you what it's all about. You don't have to be rich to be my girl. Don't have to be cool to rule my world. Ain't no particular sign. I'm more compatible with. Just want you a extra time and you a kiss. Graham, I'd like you to sing Louis Armstrong's It's a Wonderful World in the style of his cousin several times removed, the astronaut Neil Armstrong. <laughs> I see trees of green. Red roses too. I see them blossom. For me and for you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful moon. Copy Houston. I see skies of blue. Clouds of white. The bright blessed day and uh, dark sacred night. And I uh, think to myself, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> And finally, Tim, I'd like you to sing Queen's We Are the Champions in the style of Her Majesty the Queen. <laughs> We've paid our dues time after time. <coughs> I've done my sentence but committed no crime. <laughs> and bad mistakes once made a few but we in my face, but I've come through. But Charles, I intend to go on and on and on and on, because we are the champions, my subjects. And we'll go on reigning till the end, because we are the champion. What is the champion? Because we are the champion of the Commonwealth. Philip, don't do that, please. No, not now, please. Go. Well, I notice it's very nearly the end of the show, but there's still time for the teams to suggest some chat up lines for minority groups. So, teams, your suggestions, please, of chat up lines that might suit dogs where they're able to speak. Fancy a bit of rough. I promise I won't ask you to do anything I can't do myself. <laughs> Fancy doing it human star? <laughs> Since you ask, I am a pointer, but I'm pleased to see you as well. <laughs> My aftershave? Oh, it's just a little toilet water. Sit, lie down. I wish it was always this easy. <laughs> I know yeah. a great place to eat. Honestly, it's the dog's bollocks. <laughs> Let's paint the town pale yellow. <laughs> Fetch your stick you've pulled. <laughs> And so, ladies and gentlemen, as the plastic cup of time fails to emerge from the vending machine of destiny <laughs> and the scalding coffee substitute of fate splashes onto the unsuspecting crotch of eternity, 
I notice it's the end of the show, and indeed the series. But our regular teams will be back again in the spring, and what would the show be, what would the show be like without four top-class comedians? <laughs> Tune in next year to find out. <laughs> so, from Samantha, the, the teams, myself, and the fine folk of High Wycombe, it's goodbye. Barry Cryer, Graham Garden, Jeremy Hardy and Tim Brooke Taylor would be given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultant was Ian Pattinson, and the producer was John Naismith.